yet we have been hearing news that coastal cities like Mombasa will at some point get submerged. All over the world, we have witnessed people dying and losing property worth billions of shillings because of extreme weather events such as drought and flooding. What do you think about this? When we ask people who are older than us, they say that this situation never used to happen. So I, this is because climate is changing right now. I know there are a lot of people outside there who think that climate change is not real. But I'm telling you, from a community point of view, from a scientific perspective, climate change is real. A lot is happening and so much greenhouse gases are being emitted, carbon dioxide being one of them, and they're causing climate change. So what should we do about it? What can we do about it? What if we sell carbon dioxide like the way we sell airtime? What if we sell carbon dioxide like the way we sell fuel? What if we sell carbon dioxide? Or in other words, we buy carbon dioxide so that you reduce its volumes from the atmosphere and therefore balancing climate change. But before coming to carbon buying and selling, let me take you through a short story about me. I was born in a rural village in the coast of Kenya, and I wanted to be a mechanical engineer, simply because my dad is a mechanic. However, my dad never wanted even a single member of his family to, be, to do a job that is related to his, because he thought this job is not worthy his children. My dad loved me so much and she gave me, she wanted, he wanted me to be a very responsible person and a disciplined one. So he gave me one task, one very beautiful task, looking after my grandmother's gods. Very, very interesting. I liked it, I'm telling you. You know, I liked it, but my neighboring kids did not like it because I was not playing with them. You know, those days in primary school, we used to go to school, particularly in lower primary, we used to go to school in the morning hours, and then in the afternoon, we were free and we, we'd be playing. But I was not getting time to play with them because I was doing grazing of my grandmother's goats. Each and every day, I liked the way I saw the goats growing up and multiplying. And even my grandmother herself liked, liked it so much, and she loved, she loved me so much. And I remember at one point she would joke and say that while I was away, when I come back from school now, while I was away, the gods have missed me and they were crying out, calling out my name. And if she would even imitate, me, meaning Mwamba, you know. But there are those my neighboring kids who never wanted me to do grazing and they would actually laugh at me. So now, to run away from them, I now used to go graze in a Kaya forest, a very beautiful environment, a forest. In the forest, it was so peaceful. The only sound you could see, it's crawling animals, birds singing, insects moving around, and probably sounds of women who had come to fetch firewood. And I fell in love with the forest. Then I, I knew that this was the, my career. I wanted to be a forest man. And I changed it from being a I changed my idea of becoming a mechanical engineer and started to fall in love with forests. After high school, I joined campus and did natural resources management. After then, I got a chance to get attached to Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute where I learned about mangroves. Mangroves, like any other forest, they are very important because they provide a range of goods and services. Mangroves are breeding grounds for fish. Mangroves are acting as buffers, holding back pollutants from entering the ocean. Mangroves also offer pro protection of the coastline because they, attenuate, they hold back the wave energy from reaching the coastline. 
but like any other trees, mangroves, store carbon dioxide. They, they, breathe, they take in carbon dioxide through the process of photosynthesis. And this carbon dioxide can be stored in the tree and in the soil for many years. You see how beautiful mangroves are when it comes to breeding ground for fish. So this carbon dioxide can be stored for many years in the mangroves. And therefore, we can mitigate the effect of climate change because climate change and carbon dioxide go hand in hand. But, you know, how do we make sure that people buy out these ideas? So let me come back now to carbon crediting. We don't sell, we, we don't give out carbon, no. We give you an opportunity to offset your carbon footprints. So you give us money, we plant more mangroves so that they can store that carbon dioxide which you have emitted. As simple as that. Think, think, think of it in this way. You have traveled the world, you have emitted so much carbon dioxide and then you feel like that you have destroyed the environment by, by emitting this carbon dioxide. So you need to find a place who is holding this carbon dioxide back by conserving forests and pay them for that incredible work. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that, that is our work, planting mangroves so that we conserve them. And as a result, they'll get carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and now we get, we get paid. But you know, people actually use this mangrove for various uses, including firewood and building and construction. So how do we change their minds and let them conserve, let them benefit by seeing the mangrove staying intact? You need to call these people and talk to them and show them, educate them, what they can do with mangroves. Initially, it was not an easy work because this community actually used to get into the forest and cut this mangrove for their various uses. But now, Gazi Bay being a very important fishery landing site, the fishermen there understood that mangroves were important to fisheries. And currently, we are conserving Mikoko Pamoja to rest, actually to reverse the situation. We are conserving, through Mikoko Pamoja, we are conserving a total of 117 hectares of mangroves and restoring 0 0.4 hectares of the degraded areas so that we can sequester 3,000 tons of carbon dioxide per year. These project areas sequester around 3,000 tons of carbon dioxide per year. And for your information, we are the very first community-led initiative in the whole world do carbon conservation for the benefits, to do mangrove conservation so that we can benefit in the range of climate, wild animals, as well as the local people. So whenever we get this money from the, from the carbon credit, from the carbon buyers, I normally call the community in what we call consultative meetings, in short, village barazas. And that is where now I ask the community. And it's regardless of gender, regardless of where you come from, regardless of religion. Then I ask them, what do you want us to do with this money? What do you want us to do with this money? This is our own money. It's not a donation money. Because we have actually allowed ourselves not to cut this mangrove so that they can thrive well. It is our money. What do you want us to do with it? And then prioritize, list of the projects is done and then prioritization is also done. So we have actually successful implemented projects in the range of water and sanitation and promoting education in that area. Initially, water was a problem in my community. There used to be no accessibility of fresh water. Women would travel a long distance to get this water. They would get water using open wells 
and manual pumps, which were prone to accidents, prone to diseases. You know? And some kids would not be able to pump this water because they would get fr frustrated. You know? But now, because we are earning from carbon crediting, we are reversing the situation. We have channeled fresh water into the community. We have installed water, water pumps and tanks, and now we are channeling water into the community. So now we have relieved that burden by our women who will, will travel a long distance just to get fresh water. On promotion of education, we have also channeled fresh water to these kids. We have bought school books to these kids uh, from our community. We have also renovated cl classes and the kids now are going to school in very, very beautiful schools because of, simple because of money which you get from carbon crediting. As well, we are actually involving these people, these small kids, so that we make them to become environmental champions in future. And we are conducting, after, uh, we are conducting environmental awareness to them so that to equip them to be conservationists, particularly mangroves and forests. And because of this contribution of our project to, towards developing our local community, we were recognized internationally by United Nations Development Program through the Equator Prize 2017 as one of the winners. because of promoting local sustainable development for people and resilient communities. So Mikoko Pamoja presents a simple and nature-based solution towards meeting the United Nations Development Programs. And currently, we are working towards expanding this project by including seagrass in our conservation areas. Because seagrass also, like any other plant, can store high volumes of carbon dioxide. And this will mean that we shall be earning more carbon, more from carbon selling and developing our community. We have received a lot of requests from communities who want to do projects like ours, who want to be like us. Because it's just a matter of conserving a forest replanting forests, and then you earn your money. Rather than cutting them down and then few individuals to, to, de, to, to, to benefit from them. Here, Mikoko Pamoja is benefiting the whole community and they want to do a project like ours. So for us, to change the world in a different way, is simple as this, living, involving the local community bringing them together. You know, local community contribute less to climate change and that the most people who are actually are affected by the effects of climate change and they never get chances to attend these fancy and beautiful United Nations conferences where they can air out their ideas. But with Mikoko Pamoja, we, had, we have demonstrated to the world that we can change the world by conserving mangroves and therefore mitigating climate change. As simple as that. But you cannot work alone. You need people. Thank you.